welcome to another episode of Playing Telephone. I'm Scarlett Sanchez. I'm Dennis Kluba. Hey, Dennis. How's it going? How was your weekend? Um, It was good. It was good. It was I good. think we, we saw each other on Sunday. A little Sunday fun day for a second. Sunday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very briefly. Oh, okay. Oh. I was like, what I do? You ended up working on Saturday. Yeah, I worked so. a little bit this weekend. So it was, a, it was a tame one for me again. Yeah, it was chill. Well, you had a pretty good run there back to back with yeah. DC. And then I think you did something the weekend before. Vegas or no? I, was I don't know Vegas. if that was. Yeah, Vegas, DC. So you had a good a good run there in August? Yeah. Is what it would have been. So you're yeah. kind of chilling out September. Which is nice. Whenever yeah. I see that my calendar's empty, I'm like, yes. For the record, though, it's usually not that we don't plan to go out. It's that you fall asleep at 8 p.m. <laughs> and then the next day you're like, ah. Oh. Missed out on another one. <laughs> And I'm like, well, you went to bed, Grandma, at 8 p.m. How would you have known? I really need to stop doing that on Friday nights. <laughs> I really need to stop falling asleep at 7 p.m. on Friday nights. So that's not a good idea. Because, you know, I get up early, obviously. So during the week, yeah, yeah, you, give me, you give me some trouble even during the week. I'm like, yeah. okay, I got to get up at 4. Well, the thing that scares me the most is when I knock on your door and I hear the TV blasting. And I'm like, she's in there, right? And then I'm like calling a couple times, no answer. I'm like, she's either dead or asleep. And walk away from the door. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> either way, not dealing with it. I was never here. Your neighbor probably thinks like you're like, I'm just, ne- I'm always knocking and nobody's like ever coming to see me. I'm Who like, yeah. Who is this guy? He was knocking. Yeah. Yeah. I do have partial hearing loss. I feel like, cause I <laughs> listen to my TV way too loud. That is true. I had a good weekend though. It was chill. Um, went to the galaxy game on Sunday. Had never been in that area mm. of LA. How was it? It was good. It's much more suburban and like family okay. than LAFC, which is more close to downtown. Okay. Okay. So it's more like, oh, like bring your kids to the game, you know, and like there a lot of kids and families. Game? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's so cute. It's just fun. Did so, we, did, did the team you wanted win? We tied. Okay. St. Louis versus Galaxy. Oh, so we cool. tied. So it wasn't great, but that's a fun game. All in all, had a good weekend. A lot of people though, didn't have a good weekend. Mm-hmm. Good week, including Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis. Who basically are getting drugged through the mud, dragged, drugged through the mud right now. Um, probably rightly so. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They wrote letters of recommendation. This all came out after Danny Masterson was sentenced to 30 years to life mm-hmm. in prison. Uh, it dates back to, back in 2017, he was accused uh, by multiple women yeah. of sexually assaulting them, raping them, and drugging them too. Mm-hmm. So now fast forward to 2023, he's finally been sentenced and is yeah. going to go to jail for it. Lawyer cap on before we get into Ashton and Mila. I never know how this, this sentencing, because I remember this being such a big deal when it happened. Obviously, when the accusations came out in 2017, I definitely remember in 2020, like mm-hmm. it kind of coming to fruition. Yeah. But now three years later, it's finally the sentencing. Just wanted to say that took a long time to get to. It takes a very long time. Yeah. He also dealt with like mistrials and then right. picked it back up, not having enough evidence for some of the cases because okay. it was originally four or five women that came out uh, against him. And then it was only two that he got charged for. Yeah. Two okay. rapes. But ultimately what came out of it was the 30 years to life sentence. Yes. Um, and the big thing, the reason that Ashton and Mila are getting really just slaughtered is they wrote letters of recommendation essentially mm-hmm. remember we saw that with iggy azalea exactly. uh, he wrote one for tory lanes too mm-hmm. which i guess they are i would have thought that they would have learned from that, from that that these letters become public uh i don't know if that's a new thing but they mm-hmm. they say they didn't know or that the family had asked them to write these letters and then they did the family of masterson the, yeah danny's family um they released a video, essentially. Well, that, first, let's talk about the letters. Okay. In the letters, yeah. um, they are talking about, obviously, they did Danny, or they met Danny on the 70s show. That's show. They were all really good friends throughout that. So over 25 years ago. This is early 2000s. If you're really young, that 70s show was yeah. like prime at that time. Yeah. yeah. It is a really good show. Yeah. It's still pretty good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they all became best friends in that show. And in their letters, they talk about how Danny's a role model and it's like a brother figure to him and that he's just a genuine good character person. And that, um, uh, they, he was a main person who kept them out of drugs too during that time. I don't know why that was a main focus, but like led them into a life of not sobriety, but not going into drugs, staying on the yeah. straight and narrow, especially since they were young too. Uh, so yeah, a lot of positive, positive reviews, obviously for their friend who they've been friends with for a long time, a really long time. And like we said, the reason that they wrote those, the best that we can to our ability that we know is because it came from Danny's family asked them to write them. And typically, and they'll talk about it when 
to talk about the video, they thought that this was only going to be the judge would see these. Mm-hmm. And it was more centered around their relationship with Danny and not necessarily what they may or may not have known was happening at that time. Mm-hmm. Correct. No, I guess what they didn't know, but I think in the video, which yeah, they yeah. did an apology video. We'll call it quote unquote apology video on Saturday. Uh-huh. And they talked about uh, that. It didn't, it's not taking away the sentencing. It's not taking away the trauma that the victims have gone through. Yeah. We wrote a letter for our friend that we believe is a good person. Yeah. Is what I got out of it. Yeah, no, I completely agree. They did. I think a good job of just explaining. And I think this came from a true place of, they in no way meant to um, degrade or like bring up old trauma for the victims or not believe them. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, it wasn't like they were doing that to undermine the victims that, you know, were on the other side of the trial. It was more that their relate, they like explained it, how it was their relationship with Danny. Yeah. It's kind of like, Oh, my best friend did this, but because we're best friends, I'm going to protect him no matter what he did. Mm-hmm. is more so how I took it. Not that, uh, yeah, I think that the apology video was terrible. I didn't really think that it was sincere sincere or genuine. I think that they don't feel bad for writing that letter. I think that they believe Danny Masterson is their closest friend, that he is a good person. And maybe they knew about the stuff. I don't know if they knew that anything that was going on, but they're standing by him. By writing that letter, I think that shows that I'm standing by my friend regardless. I think I read it a little bit differently. Okay. I think it was a little bit more sincere okay. than that. Um, and I think what they were trying to do, which is such a weird intersection is like, you're talking about an emotional situation where you have a certain relationship with your friend, mm-hmm. but then your friend has made mistakes clearly. Mm-hmm. And, but you weren't there when that happened. Yeah. So it's like, how, like, do you, I guess they tried to take emotion out of it and talk about just their relationship with that person. Yeah. And what we don't hear in the letter or maybe what they didn't write, which is probably where it gets into it is they should have said, Hey, in that video, clearly our friend's guilty. Mm-hmm. And until that person can change, reform, get help. And that'll never bring back all the bad things that yeah. this person did. Like you have to say, like they didn't say in there once that he was at fault. Right. All they said was their position on the letter. They Mm -hmm. should have said, regardless of our relationship with Danny, he's guilty. Mm -hmm. Right. Would that have helped a little bit? I think maybe, I mean, for them, but the whole point of them writing the letter was probably to bring the sentencing down. Help the sentencing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeah. I just think also though, in the video, Mila felt very you could tell Ashton was trying to make it more conversational or Mila seemed like she was teleprompter. Like a prompter. Yeah. So that was the part where I just didn't really feel anything from her. Uh, but I get what you're saying too, with they had to put out this video. They had to say something because the mm-hmm. backlash was unbelievable. People were completely dragging them. How could you stand for somebody like this, this type of person, not only rape, but also drugging these women yeah. multiple times, like clearly guilty. I mean, he got 30 years, but in the video they did say in terms of what you're talking about, about not saying that he's guilty. They just said that we don't want to take away the judicial system and disrespect that. Mm. I feel like that was their little way of just throwing in that pebble. Yeah. That's annoying. I would have rather them said, like we just mentioned, our friend, regardless of our relationship with them is guilty of these acts. Cause then you're at least saying like, Hey, on the outside, from our perspective, he might've been a good guy, but clearly he made mistakes, Mm -hmm. which I feel like is admitting both sides of it. Like, Hey, I didn't know when this was happening, but you're guilty of this. It's clear. The judge has proven. Yeah. Um, and just talking about with being a good guy, that's also brought up is Ashton Kutcher, a good guy. Now there's been a lot of resurfaced clips from back in that 70s show days. Yeah, yeah, that era. And also his punk days. There was one that went viral. He's talking about Hillary Duff. So they were about to punk her. And he was like, oh, we have Hillary Duff here. She's one of those um, 15 year olds that you're just waiting to turn 18. Uh, So he said that. And then he said also with the Olsen twins, like we're all waiting for them to turn 18 too. People had issues with that, obviously. Grooming. Doesn't that feel, doesn't that feel like the weirdest thing that at some point in culture, that was like an okay thing to say? Yeah. Cause I think like if you go back and watch other shows like Entourage and things like mm-hmm. that, they don't like, you couldn't make those today because they don't pass the test right. of like, that's not acceptable today. Mm-hmm. Totally understand that it changes. Yeah. But that joke in general. Kind of used to work. 
at, yeah, at what point were people like in the room like, ah, oh, right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's a weird thing that like, it seems like that should have like for all of time been like, it not should have cool. never been yeah, like it a should funny have never thing. been a funny joke. But yeah, I think people use it a lot. The kind of waiting until they're legal age. Ha ha ha. Let's yeah. wait. I think the other thing that's interesting too is just what people are probably piggybacking on as well as the hypocrisy that kind of is existing based on Ashton Kutcher's organization Thorn, mm-hmm. which has done so much work and he's gotten so much praise for helping in the human trafficking and sex trafficking. Exploitation of kids. Exploitation of kids. Yeah, which he started with Demi Moore. They were watching a documentary on uh, sex trafficking in Cambodia, which yeah. led them to start Thorn, yeah. And for all, and he got, people loved him for that mm-hmm. and still do. People love Ashton Kutcher, I feel like, in general. yeah. And so for this to come out and this to resurface, it's for me, it's just a weird thing of, like you said, like people typically had a very good perspective on Ashton Kutcher. And I feel like Mila Kunis too, Mm -hmm. that for this to come out and some of these old clips to resurface, it's like, whoa, it's almost like in a week, Mm -hmm. things like flipped on their head yeah, a little bit, you know? And also with one of the clips, remember Mila was only 14 years old when she started the show. Yeah. And there's a clip from a Rosie O'Donnell interview with Mila and Ashton and Mila brings up, Oh yeah, you guys had a bet about if I had to kiss you in one of the scenes, like make sure you make it a French kiss is what Danny Masterson bet with Ashton on the side. Like, are you going to make it a French kiss or not? Like I'll bet you 10 bucks if you do it. And the thing that you have to remember is, even at that time, though, they're all playing high schoolers. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure Ashton and Ashton Danny was were 19. 19 and Danny's older than I Ashton. Older, I think. Yeah. Probably like 21 at least, which if you look about like in society, like right now, like, cause it's hard to think to do that, especially when people are playing characters, like you're watching a show yeah, cause they're in their character, mm-hmm. but take that out of context. It's like, okay, that's a junior in college yeah. and an eighth grader or freshman in high school. Yeah. And not I, acceptable at all. Yeah, and I saw that maybe she lied about her age at certain points, yeah. but still, she probably lied and said sixteen. Still, still not very legal. Young, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And still it doesn't not legal. help it. Right, right. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is like I'm just glad, obviously, that I feel like so often, and we kind of saw this a little bit how long the Tory Lanes trial took, and like, but I was glad that it got settled. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. That so outside of the Ashton Kutcher Mila Kunis thing, it's like. Danny Masterson is being charged and being sentenced. Yeah. And for me, that's like probably the best case scenario. Mm-hmm. It sucks. These different things that are coming out of it off the back of it. Yeah. But what we know is that the person that's guilty is going to jail. Right. Yeah. Which is kind of the same thing we said with um, Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez was just like, okay, let's just make sure we get the right person. Yeah. Whatever's true, be true, but let's mm-hmm. get whoever shot whom. And this is like, okay, at least we got him. Yeah. And, and to the reason that, Mila and Asher are getting so much backlash is because it's already difficult to come forward. And mm. a lot of reasons that people don't come forward is because they say, well, he is a good guy and he just slipped up once or he just did this, yeah. but he made one mistake. And by them showing their support for him, it's kind of just saying that that's all okay. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. yeah it's definitely like I, a PR PR nightmare and like a total question of character, which I think, is taking away from a ton of their brand. Yeah, um, they need to do a lot more PR cleanup than that one apology video. The one thing I was gonna say too, is we've talked about this in the past with other like apology videos, things like that. Do you have a preference on produced versus non-produced and how um, how authentic that is? Like no. with this video, it was very like, They kind bones. of just put it up outside their house yeah, and just yeah, started yeah. talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe one take, two takes at max. Yeah. I, I just feel want, like they took yeah. it on one take. Uh, Do you have a preference? I don't really have a preference, no, because okay. we've seen professional ones, Travis Scott, Alec Baldwin. Yeah. That ended up, well, Alec Baldwin ended up, ended up getting off too, so maybe that is a better way to go. I feel like Ashton could benefit from doing a bigger interview, leave Mila out of it, because <laughs> I don't think she did very well in that interview, or that that apology video. Yeah. And also Ashton, since his organization Thorn is so much more about the message that he's going against. I just think that he has way more to lose almost yeah. for his reputation. Completely. I think it's interesting both sides. Like you said, with the Alec Baldwin thing, I remember times where there's the produced ones that I'm like, this is so insincere. Like this is so like PR driven. You felt that with Will Smith. Exactly. Will Smith. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's where I'm like, this is annoying. Mm -hmm. But then you see the one that's not well done, which is 
Kutcher and Mila Kunis that you're also like, okay, this doesn't seem very produced, but it also seems insincere. Yeah. So really, I think it's like depends on the person if they actually feel yeah, <laughs> it but, or not. Yeah, 100%. And in both those videos, I didn't feel like they cared. But um, we'll see what ends up happening like between how the public kind of perceives them and if Ashton and Mila do any more PR to kind of make the situation maybe a little bit more like apologize again. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. See? I don't know. That was not the only thing that was like bringing a lot. Of, oh, did you want to talk about Bijou Phillips and all? Uh, Bijou Phillips is Danny Mastin's wife. Yeah. Uh, he has a nine-year-old daughter too, which is something they brought up in the letters also that he's just like an exemplary. Good dad. Good dad and a good husband. But just with Bijou, she was seen uh, hugging Danny's brother after I think like getting some support from the family too. Mm. But crazy though, Bijou Phillips her dad is John Phillips from the Mamas and the Papas, that that band. What is that? Okay. <laughs> Very old band. <laughs> okay. Um, where his new wife is in that too. But anyways, or one of his wives. Uh, yeah. <laughs> John Phillips though, her sister, Bijou's sister, Mackenzie, are the two kids of John and his wife, Susan. Okay. And then Mackenzie, years later, wrote a book about John and how that he would sexually assault her Uh, The daughter. The daughter for like almost an entire decade. And I don't know. I just wanted to bring that up. Just the weird connection of like having that trauma as a child and then also having this mixed into your adulthood. And we haven't even really mentioned Scientology because there was some rumors that, that yeah, there was some rumors that Bijou came back to him because they'd separated at some point. There's rumors that Scientology is the reason that she went back to him. And a lot of these victims too were a part of the Church of Scientology. Yeah. There's a lot of questions around that. Yeah. And we don't, yeah. I don't know if I even have the time to get into that rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. That is worth noting though. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, but in like continuing on what we knew about Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner's divorce over the weekend, the tour, the Jonas Brothers, what do they call this? Just the Jonas Brothers, the tour? Yeah. <laughs> no, literally, I think their poster says the tour. Um, original. They were in Los Angeles playing Dodger Stadium. It was a very emotional thing for them just because they had grown up part of their life in LA when they were like, you remember when they had that weird Disney Channel show for like a second? Tough. I forgot about that. Regardless, they played Dodger Stadium and Joe actually talked during the Mm -hmm. show. Very briefly. Very briefly about current status maybe or like currently what's going on and just said yeah this was his way of addressing the divorce but it was before he was going to sing hesitate which is a song that he's dedicated to sophie in the past Uh and he just said hey it's been a rough week got a huge applause and Uh, yeah (laughs) we're here for you (laughs) joe uh and he said that just so you guys know you don't have to believe it unless it comes out of my lips Okay. Um, Can you tell us anything else? Yeah. The only thing that he's really said is the statement. And you can tell that a lot of these outlets that are covering stories, it seems like it's very jo- uh, Joe-sided, if mm. that makes sense. Because we haven't heard anything about from Sophie. No. As soon as you said that quote from him, I was just about to be like, and I don't believe it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. um, no, you're completely right. We also saw this week, the tour's been making stops like at different places. Mm-hmm. It's been clear that what you said as well is we sh- we're hearing Joe's side a lot and yeah. because they're on tour and Sophie's filming, yeah. we're seeing Joe a lot. Yeah. So the emotional shedding some tears on stage at one point, we think there may have been throughout the divorce situation where he got maybe a little hammered before the show. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's where too, we're seeing a lot more of Joe and it's easy to almost like, see the emotional side of what's going on, Mm -hmm. which is commendable. Like it's, you know, it's tough to watch on stage, but also I'm not going to be naive and not be like, people will probably like Joe Mm -hmm. because of this. Yeah. You know, I'm just, I'm just not, you know, we don't know if there was, we don't know like what exactly broke their marriage up. Remember they said that there was this ring footage, um, what is it called? Ring doorbell. Ring camera. Yeah, Ring yeah. camera. You know, you put it on the back of your door. Um, that Joe found of Sophie in an in uh, in a not good position. 
I don't know what There's, was going on. Yeah, we don't know what's in the video, if he saw something or heard something. There is ring camera footage. And the, but we know there's footage. Yeah, there's footage. And Joe wasn't happy about it, and it was a breaking point in their marriage. Yeah. Which, that made me think, cheating. Yeah, coming back from a Then people are night. saying that Joe cheated, so it's just, who cheated? Who knows? Do we just jump to cheating because most people seem to be cheating left and right? Uh, Cheat. But yeah, you're right. We have been seeing a lot more of Joe throughout the divorce. Uh, going through it. But then finally we saw Sophie, we got images today of her in Spain filming for Joan, which was also confusing because I thought she was in the UK, but I guess they went to go do some scenes there. Yeah. Um, and she's smoking a ciggy, letting out all that stress. Timothy Chalamet smoking, to chain Sophie smoking. Turner, chain smoking. Would you rather be in the middle of tour or on the middle of a shoot divorce? Both are terrible. Can you imagine? That's like fully having to be. Actually, I would rather be on filming set. Yeah, yeah. on set because I can take myself out of it, be my character, yes. and move on. And then you know maybe after the scene and scene cry. Uh, when it's close set, yeah, I think it'd be much more difficult to go out in front of. I don't know how many people they're playing to thirty thousand, forty thousand people, mm -hmm. and be like, oh, all these songs are attached to. Some sort of My love song, life. yeah, or yeah, whatever it may be. And also people I'm sure are doing signs like, we're here for you, Joe, Team Joe, and all these things. So it's not in the back of his head. It's right there in the forefront. Yeah, I don't know. I think it'd be really difficult to be on in the middle of tour. Um, <laughs> it's tough. I think we did see something too. I think you might've sent me something that was talking about Joe did go back to the UK like over the summer mm -hmm. with Sophie um, because we had talked about that in our last week's episode about how she felt homesick and that's kind of where she was able to feel happier and, you know, yeah. deal with a little less of the mental health and depression stuff. And something that they tried to do was over the summer, Joe went over there for a little while. Mm -hmm. And I think it just like, what I've heard is that it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Like he was over there. She was in her, with her friends and from like her family. Heard, it didn't work out. I didn't hear it from his lips. So I don't believe any of it. <laughs> yeah. But and I'm thinking it didn't work out. They're divorced. They're divorced. <laughs> what I'm thinking is <laughs> it didn't work. Um, no, I, I do remember hearing yeah. something like that. It's always kind of interesting to me, though, just because we grew up like together, like our families live very close by. Mm -hmm. And so maybe we have an affinity that's like different. Mm -hmm. But I feel like you kind of have to at some point, whoever, whomever you marry, you kind of also have to develop a little bit of love for their hometown. Yeah. At some point that it's like, you know, you see the charm in it. Maybe you don't want to move back there or live there. But you know you're going to be visiting their family too. So exactly. Yeah. yeah have it's a little, little bit of, of a comfort take, with it. Right. That I'm just like, hey, if you got to do two weeks every year in whatever suburban English town in the countryside. I mean, I think you can sacrifice a little bit more time. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, with how this, bad could it be? It's, you being know. Being on the rocks for six months to only spending two weeks in the UK. I mean, yeah, they could split their time 50-50 or 60-40, however you want to think of, of that. it. Yeah. I'm just wondering how wrong could a home visit have been? Yeah. You know, it's like, what could have gone Maybe wrong? Maybe that was more of like a last ditch effort. Remember when we saw Dalton Gomez flew out to see Ariana Grande for the last time when she was filming too, to try and make that marriage work? That yeah. one didn't either. Bunch of cheaters again. Bunch of cheaters. Uh, yeah. There was one more thing though. I forgot about Sophie. The one thing that I feel like we've heard a little bit from Sophie's point of view mm -hmm. is that she went through postpartum depression after having their second child. Yeah. They have Willa who's three and then they have another uh, baby really who's only one years old. The name starts with D. We don't know her name. Uh, but we'll yeah. Never know. And they said that maybe we will never know. If it doesn't come from Joe's lips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, she said that Joe was not supportive throughout that and was trying to drag her to all these events. Like, I don't know what the events were, but public events where she had to be more on. So she felt like he wasn't very understanding and supportive through that time in her life either, especially becoming new parents together too. Yeah, it's just so interesting. That gives me a lot of context just because I think that we I said this last week when this news came out. Joe and Sophie were seen a lot together mm -hmm. and people liked seeing them out, whether that was with the kids or like her at the concerts and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I really do wonder if at that time that was the last place that she wanted to be. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But if we're hearing more about this, it's like I can imagine going through that and being like, Hey, like I really don't want to 
be seen out at dinner and have pictures taken of me. Like I'm not feeling it. I don't have the mental it. capacity. I don't have the ability. Yeah, it's. But if Joe is dragging her out to promote the tour and promote the relationship and the Jonas Brothers thing, mm-hmm. he's like, hey, we have to go do this event. Yeah. A Difficult. Ton of, a ton of layers. So many layers. But if it doesn't come from Joe's lips, I don't believe it. <laughs> um, I'm interested to see like if anything more comes out and also the performance that she puts in is this British jewel. I, think it'll be good. I hope it'll be good. I kind of like like divorce, either breakup albums are usually good. Mm-hmm. Breakup movies are usually good too. Really? I don't know. <laughs> it's a new thing that I'm working on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You're trying to start fetch. <laughs> trying to start a new thing. It's never going to work Gretchen. Uh, Get over it. This is actually a fun story though. Fun. <laughs> Cardi B. We love Cardi B and Offset. Yeah. They produce clips. They produce sound bites. Regular, regular, schmegula. <laughs> she's on Hot 97. Yeah, she was on Hot 97. Uh, she's talking about their sex life, her and Offsets. Makes sense to me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And she was talking to them about how he has this big tattoo on his stomach of Michael Jackson. And whenever she, and she does a little motion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, oral sex. <laughs> okay, I never know how to say it. She goes down and she just has Michael Jackson looking over her as she's trying to do this. And terrifying. She, one, terrifying. Two, but it's also like, hey, she's saying like, hey, good job, Cardi. It's like, oh my gosh. Like she has MJ rooting her on. <laughs> oh, I would hate to see that. Come on it. The thing is, when I first saw Offset's, like, all of his tattoos, I wouldn't think, you know, since he has so many, Mm -hmm. but then Michael Jackson's does stand out so much, and his (laughs) eyes are just staring right at you, so (sighs) I I get what she's saying. And he's rich, so it's a good tattoo. Yeah. Yeah, like, you can tell exactly who that is. Well, thank goodness. If it was just some, I don't know, well, Michael Jackson, I don't know if I ever want him to be looking at me in the bedroom. Just beat it. Just beat it. All right. (laughs) Offset's a massive Michael Jackson fan, though. I mean, he's talked about how he's influenced him and all these things. Recently also dressed up as Michael Jackson for Beyonce's concert. So he's a diehard, and he said that he will not remove this tattoo no matter what, even if Cardi doesn't like it. I just think I understand being a Michael Jackson fan. Getting other people tattooed on me is always a uh, no Never put a name or someone's face on me. I just, no. the idea of them messing it up, that's why I was saying, at least it looks like Michael Jackson. I wouldn't want Michael Jackson though, so that's why yeah. I, I, I'm not really fully standing by my comment, mm-hmm. but you could easily mess up someone's face. Imagine just having like, oh, it's my mom. It looks nothing like your mom. Mm, terrible, terrible. I wonder it's if funny. like she has to like look away the whole time, just like, Side eye, just like be over here. Well, obviously your eyes are open, so. I know, but say you'd have to just like. (laughs) Side eye it or close your eyes. I would feel bad as a partner. I wouldn't want it to be uncomfortable or awkward for my partner. Like I'd be like, yeah, maybe I should get that covered or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Or close Michael Jackson's eyes. (laughs) Fills in the eyeballs. Not for you. Not right now. Wear a shirt. Um. That's terrifying and hilarious. I think that it's funny too. Like Cardi, for some reason, she's so open about everything. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it makes her relatable, but it makes her like. I just think she's funny. So funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it, it's like it's not. It's not. It's almost like their relationship for the be- better and worse is like yeah. we know so much about it mm-hmm. that some of the spats are like goofy, like relatable things of yeah. like what a dork my husband is. Like, why does he do it? You know? And he's like, I'm not going to change it. Like I like it. It's like, Mm -hmm. that's relatable to people. And I think Mm -hmm. that by her being so open, she does get points. Like that's why people like her. They are weirdly open though, because remember when he posted on his Instagram story that she was cheating on him. (laughs) So, and then she made the very public uh, recording. Yeah. Saying, I'm not saying they're perfect. I'm just saying that it's, no, no, no. I'm just saying it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) They, they, they seem to have a more public relationship. Completely. Um, that wasn't the only public relationship that seems to have been coming to light recently. It's we talked floating all of a sudden. Yeah, it we used talked, to be private. <laughs> seriously, we talked a week ago about uh, Kylie Jenner, Timothy Chalamet for the first time being out in public at the Beyonce concert. Mm-hmm. 
Of course, a day later, they're at the U.S. Open final, mm -hmm. which was uh, Novak Djokovic versus Daniel Medvedev mm -hmm. um, in New York City. They were there with a ton of other in, uh, celebrities, influencers, etc. Mm -hmm. Matthew McConaughey, John Hamm, Martha Stewart. Just packing on the PDA again. Making out again. Um, I guess we're here but for here it. And, but here and there, it's not like they're making out the entire tennis game. I don't think you need to be That's making out be at doing. a sports event. I think kissing at a concert makes a little bit more sense to me. It's, it's like, emotional. Oh, feel the music, put my love on top, kiss, kiss. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was good. <laughs> thanks. But then. Ace. <laughs> make out. Love. <laughs> Fault. Score. No, that's not. I think they're just in their. They're are in we in their honeymoon phase? Honeymoon phase for sure. Gosh. Man. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Was, could he smoke in there again? Was he smoking I, again? He wasn't smoking. I think he would get kicked out of there. Yeah, US Open's a little bit more strict. I guess SoFi wasn't too strict with that, obviously, especially if you're in the VIP section. It's true. You told me um, to get over my un unbelief about how these celebrities are traveling back and forth by coastally. Yeah. I've accepted. How can you be in New York one day in LA the next? I now accept that we are just chartering private jets all over the place and... That's, that's how we do it. Welcome to A-list celebrity life. <laughs> I just believe. This has not been a secret. He's always asking, where are the kids? Where are the kids? Nannies. Nannies. Is anyone. How are they getting there? Private jets. Okay. Case closed. At least Joe is playing the role of they're on the tour bus with me. Yeah. Versus. Can you imagine Kylie's those like, kids? I'd be so pissed if I was Nick and Kevin. Wah, please, I just want to go to bed. True. Because they're totally just on a bus. Yeah, they're in hotels and flying around. Because um, they have jets. Um, <laughs> my other thing is, too, is we like never see Travis with the kids either. So it is truly the nanny. Yeah, but when she's doing this out and getting public... Attention? Attention, yeah. He's may, he might be home with the kids. Maybe. I would, I would think so. Maybe. Their calendar has to be a nightmare. Like a literal nightmare. Um, you said this though too. It's almost interesting that we typically don't see Kylie Jenner out a lot. Like we hadn't seen her really in a massive public eye other than the small clips that she would share on Instagram and things mm -hmm. like that. And She's TikTok. public in her own way. Public yeah. by showing her lip makeup. She's public in that. And she wants to definitely have a connection with her um, fans by like her little workout videos or her makeup or here's this like fun little clip of me and yeah, Stormy yeah. going shopping. But yeah. But now it seems that just to a certain degree, her being with Timothy Chalamet, mm -hmm. it is more public right now. Yeah. And I'm just interested because that's been so opposite of what her activity has been over the past years yes. when she was dating Travis and had the kids that it's just interesting to me that now you're kind of stepping into a much more public role just in going out. Mm -hmm. you, like you said, she was public before in her own way, yeah. but Timothy, I feel like is very much like going to events and like New and York fashion movie, week and, and, and movie coming out too. Willy Wonka. Well, yeah, yeah. Willy Wonka coming out. He was filming Dune yeah. chapter two, but that got pushed obviously because of the SAG strikes. Um, but I'm just interested to see how they navigate that. Not that Kylie can't. Obviously, she can. It's just a big change from what we're used to. Yeah, and I wonder what their breakup will be over hectic <laughs> schedules. <laughs> that is the most cynical thing ever. You immediately, yeah, and how are they going to break up? Schedules aren't working. <laughs> That's going to be my new breakup line. Sorry, I'm busy. Schedules. She's like, you're not like flying across the country and like film movies. Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I am. Just because you don't see it doesn't Did mean it's not happening. Change? Yeah, I got to work an extra 30 minutes yeah. tonight, babe. <laughs> I mean, not babe, we're done. <laughs> not babe, we're done. Um, That's a Joe Jonas. Didn't he break up with, he broke up with uh, Taylor. Taylor Swift on a 20 second call, phone call? I think there were 15 though at the time, or like 17. That one will allow. I think that we're just, guys are so immature at that age. Like you just couldn't imagine. Yes. No, I'm totally okay with that. You're okay with a voicemail breakup? And it, and it also gave Taylor a, a great album, so. It did. Or great music. Speaking of Taylor, she's back in the news. She's always in the news now. Eras. This is just in relationship. 
people that we hadn't seen for years had been so private Mm -hmm. are now just like everywhere. I feel like Taylor Swift, we talked about Kylie, but she was out over the weekend in New York hanging out with Travis Kelsey. We didn't see photos of this yet. Okay. (laughs) Okay. There are rumors right now that Travis Kelsey and her are seeing each other, seeing each other. I said hanging out. Hanging out. out. Hanging out was the exact terminology. You were right. Hanging out is below seeing each other. That's definitely below seeing each other. Okay, I just wanted to, I just wanted to. Hanging out could be a friend, really. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that we haven't. Or are they hanging out? See, well, when you put it on. Hey, Travis. Travis Kelsey, I would assume most people know, but not too sporty. I'm not, but I know Travis Kelsey from the KC Chiefs. Yeah, he's a tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, If you remember a while back. You had to chime in there. He had a reality TV show that Mm -hmm. was on E! or E! I think. Um, It was super cringe. (laughs) He's been dating somebody on and off for like five years, but eventually, I think like this past Yeah, they just broke up last year. Yeah, like. He was dating, what's her name? Oh, Kayla Nicole. Yeah, and that was a big thing for him because, like, they were always on, always off again. For five years. Yeah, this was super surprising to me. The way that it kind of came about, because he talked about it on his podcast Mm -hmm. with his brother, Jason, um, called New Heights, Mm -hmm. where Jason was kind of grilling him in a funny and playful way. Like, oh, what were you up to this weekend? And Travis was like, "Uh, I don't know, you know, I kind of, I don't really know. Like, you know, because obviously can't say anything, but I'm sure, you know, but. Like, I think I was in New York, like maybe, maybe not, like whatever. Um, and then we know that before when he went to the Eras Tour concert, I don't know if it was at the KC, it might've been it was the, the KC stop, yeah. He wanted to give one of the bracelets as a Swifty to Taylor mm-hmm. with his number on it. Smart. But, that would've been such a cute little meet cute. Yeah, but obviously, like he said, she doesn't really do a lot of before and after things just because she has such an extensive show yeah. that he wasn't able to you know, get to her and give her that. But, um, I'm surprised he couldn't, but yeah, yeah. it's not like she's going down to the crowd and signing autographs or doing meet and greets at the end of her show. Like I would be, I'd be doing hella meet and greets. Um, (laughs) trying to meet all the ladies or what? Yeah, for sure. I, I don't love this. I'm just going to put it out there. I don't love this. Um, yeah, I think I had a thing with Travis Kelsey from the start, number one, I'm not a Chiefs fan. Number two, he, um, the the reality TV show r- pissed me off at when that happened like 10 years ago. I think he's a, a beloved, though, football player. I would he say is. he's very popular. He is very popular. They're both the same age, which is kind of surprising. 33. Born in 1989. I don't know. That's typically how that works. <laughs> I just wanted to bring up 1989 because I was like, did she go through people's uh, 1989 to try and find someone? She's like, you need to find my favorite number or maybe somebody was born on the 13th. I don't know. Um, She would do that. She would do that, right? Find some sort of Easter egg so (laughs) her fans could somehow connect it that way. Okay, no, I'm going, okay. Just ignore that part. Uh, Easter egg football (laughs) looks like an egg. Um, No, I'm saying she does Easter eggs for hints. I know, I know, I know. Okay, okay. It's just an interesting, it's just an interesting back and forth between um, former, like we had Maddie Hilly for a second. That's what I'm saying. This is a huge turn from yeah. her usual type. It's usually singers, the creative, creative. Yes, yes. Not that Travis Kelsey isn't creative, but massive football player is not athlete. even remotely. Yeah, athlete is not typically in her genre that she's usually into. But my other thing too is. Travis Kelsey didn't play in the first weekend in which they lost the game. Not a great time to be for it to come out that you were like in New York. I don't know when that was mm-hmm. hanging out with Taylor, but it's like, I'm sure his team and like <laughs> other teammates are like, okay, let's focus on the season. Like, cause he was injured. I know Aaron Rodgers was just injured. Yeah, Achilles after seven plays. Something like that? Four plays? It was within the first, what, 10 minutes of the game? Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be out for deal. the season. Yeah. Achilles torn. I feel like they were doing so much, just so excited for the Jets to have him, and then immediately he's out. Done. It's over. Uh, but anyways, I think this could actually be a good couple. No. <laughs> I won't allow it. 
I won't allow it. We'll allow it. <laughs> All right. Well, but the dinner that she was at, she was with friends, though. We actually got photos of this. Just This actually happened. This actually happened on Monday. Hanging out with her, with her usual, I feel like these are her usual people though, no? Yeah, Blake Lively, Ryan Reynolds, Channing Tatum. Not as frequent that we would see them together, but they were at that wedding together. That damn what? <laughs> Channing, uh, Channing Tatum and Zoe Kravitz, and then also Gigi Hadid. Yeah, pretty much her normal group. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like you said, out and about always. Do you see Travis Kelsey in that group? I guess not, but yeah, it is, it is bringing an athlete into more of like the acting music world. Yeah. I don't know. Those worlds definitely collide. They collide more in LA though than they collide and in any other city. Yeah, I agree with that. The other thing that's kind of interesting, just coming off the back of the Taylor Swift before we move into VMAs, is over the weekend Calvin Harris got married mm-hmm. and ex of Taylor Swift's. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So he's Mar- one of many that she's dated, so I don't know how significant it is. For he her. was one of my favorites. Yeah. That she dated. Yeah. Personally, but. I mean, I'm sure it was a significant person, but she moves on. I get it. I just think that when people get married post, remember she sent Joe and Sophie the gifts. Yeah. Her and Joe were friends long after though, too. Her and Calvin, no? Probably not. Well, I I don't know. Her and Joe dated when they were young. I feel like a more serious relationship. Yeah, you don't really. When you're an adult, you don't. No friends. No. Oh, well, I have. Yeah, I feel like, no, no, I'm saying I have like a rule, not a rule. I didn't want to call it a rule, but I don't think that you should be friends with every single one of your exes. That's a red flag. If I started dating someone and they're like, yeah, me and Susan still hang out. Oh, I just saw Vicky. I don't know where I'm getting these names, but I would be like, why are you hanging out with your exes so much? My ex is Susan and Vicky. (laughs) (laughs) Tell the Susan and Vicky's out there. Stop hanging out with me. Um, no, definitely a red flag, but I just remember that one specifically with Joe. I get that they were older, but I'm definitely not thinking that she was sending gifts to this wedding. No, no, I don't think so. Maybe, no. maybe something nice. Who did he get married to? Uh, Vicky Hope, Radio One host. They got married in England. Oh. Not that many celebrities. They had Nile Rogers perform and then that's it. But at a bigger wedding, I feel like they had more A-list celebs there was Chris Evans got married. Over Another the too. silent wedding that we had no idea was yeah. happening. And then always saw our pictures really, mm-hmm. which then later led to the, you know, the discovery that he had his wedding. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was like people had taken photos of what I remember the first pictures came out. was like an Avengers reunion. That's what people thought it was. And they were like all in Boston. Yeah. And then it like later came out that same weekend. Oh, they were all there because Chris Evans got married. <laughs> they weren't just randomly like in a random restaurant, you know, like, so yeah, no, but they got married at his home in Boston. Very small, super intimate. All the Marvel people, Scarlett Johansson, Robert Downey Jr. were there. And then plus not in the Marvel group, John Krasinski and Emily Blunt. That seems like a sick wedding. Yeah, I, that's what I was saying. I, I, we always usually are like, which wedding would you rather go to? I would go to Chris over Calvin's. Well, first question. Although I would hop over to Calvin's at the very end. For Reception. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Did he DJ? I doubt he DJed on his own. I doubt he DJed, but I bet the person he got was sick. He got Nile Rodgers from Cheek. I don't know what that is. But so there you go. That's okay. Um, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> the Chris Evans one, we've talked about this before with private versus public relationships. He's pretty much been very secretive about his relationships in past, mm-hmm. but it only felt like it was maybe a year, year and a half ago that he was like, I'm serious. Like I'm like serious about getting married. Yeah. And then it just like happened. Yeah. Cause about a year ago was when the report came out that he'd been dating someone for a, over a year. Mm-hmm. So, but they're going to have another ceremony. Okay. Our invites for that or no, this is more, this is even more family. So she's Portuguese. She's a Portuguese actress. Oh. Uh, so they're going to have another ceremony in Portugal for any family that couldn't make it to Boston. I don't know if it was going to be another New Jersey thing. No, we could have gone Jackie to the Jersey one. I mean, <laughs> Everyone all went. the Swifties were there. So <laughs> that could have been us. Um, yeah, I'll look in the mail. Keep my eyes peeled for that one. Yeah. Uh, do you think Travis Kelsey might join Taylor Swift at the VMAs tomorrow? What if that was their first public outing? Or tonight. It's tonight. Yeah, it's like right now. Happening as we speak. I know. But that's my thing. It's it's Tuesday night. We're in the middle of football season. Just started. How how does it He's not going to be there. Yeah. I'm just saying like, how do people date people during football season? 
that's why a lot of them cheat. <laughs> You've been so and cynical. Break up. This, to this what episode. have we talked about so much week after week? If I see one more cheater, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. It's just Ariana common. Ariana Grande. It's just common now. Ariana Grande, though, really quick. Sorry, all these little, there's like been a lot of little Tidbits. things all over the place. Ariana Grande did a little video today about admitting that she has lips injections and she's done a ton of Botox. Botox. Started crying in the video. <laughs> but she was still smiling because of the Botox. <laughs> She's like oh crying God. and said that she used to hid, used to hide behind her plastic surgery. Okay, should be making fun of her insecurities, but at the same time, I'm just really in a negative vibe towards Ariana Grande in general. And yeah, didn't love it. Didn't love it. Good on her for admitting it, though. Transparency. It was nice because at first I was like, oh my god, and then I watched it and I was like, mm, I'm good. I think she. I don't know. I've always felt like she's a, like has kind of a plastic E type. Yeah. She looks unwell. Yeah. And like, even I like before I thought she maybe did, but now it's like she doesn't and like, she still kind of looks unwell. So I'm, can, I don't know how to, yeah. she changes her face so much that I like, mm -hmm. I don't know what her healthy looks like yeah. or, or without lip yeah. filler or Botox. So well, because fans remember we're calling her out for being so skinny and she said that she's actually the healthiest yeah, right she's now. Been. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Whatever works for her, that's great. Mm -hmm. She also admitted that this is how she's feeling right now. In 10 years, I could get a facelift. Like, it's really just yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Which she was that's no, fine, too. Everybody yeah. can change their mind. She wasn't shaming on getting work done. She was no. just talking about how it has affected her life. Yeah. I think it is nice to know, though, when people can admit that. I think so, too. Yeah. That's a good thing. Well, people always hide it. I hide the my Kardashians plastic surgery like crazy. I know. <laughs> my BBL. Had done? You've had work done? My BBL. <laughs> Your BBL? Yeah. I got a Brazilian butt lift. Oh, sorry, I was just looking. <laughs> hey, eyes up here, <laughs> pal. Um, <laughs> speaking of plastic surgery, Tom Sandoval and Raquel Levis were back in the news. <laughs> That's such a great segue. Tom Sandoval, Raquel Levis were back in the news. And I thought this is probably one of our funniest stories of the whole episode. <laughs> this one? I think this is hilarious. Yeah, I do. Raquel posted for kind of the... I mean, Raquel or Rachel? Rachel, sorry. Rachel, oh, get it together. Rachel posted for her birthday. Yeah, yeah, she did. She's doing Flowers. a little uh, cross-country trip on a little road trip. Okay, cute, whatever. Boring video. You hate her. We get it. <laughs> no. She could have put up anything Scott would have said um whatever <laughs> happy birthday <Blech. laughs> regardless it was her like in, in a flower stand garden they black? <laughs> flower stand and she just said I don't know what she's she said not in the, in the flower stand she's walking through a flower store God. I don't even think I fully watched it then I'm not gonna lie whatever either way Tom commented on it and said, uh, what do you say? Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Um, I hope you're finding peace and happiness. and happiness. My friend. Miss you, friend. 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 Bizarre. Ruined your life. Friend. Friend. My question to this was, and then later, Rachel came back, put up a story of her blocking Tom. Yeah. Iconic. I'm loving this now. I'm, I'm liking Rachel. Didn't love Raquel. But Rachel, this newfound person. Oh, so now you're Team Rachel. <laughs> Sorry, I've been Team Rachel. No, I'm Team Rachel, not Team Raquel. Okay, hater. Um, uh, but yeah, Tom, you're a narcissist. You went on there to just have your name be seen again. Some sort of story. No? Why couldn't he have called her, texted her, anything? Yeah, yeah. Maybe to he's butthurt. Maybe she's already blocked his number. Totally agree with that. All those things. <sighs> My thought process was, is that coming out of the reunion, I thought that there was going to be some sort of them trying to do something with that relationship. Mm -hmm. Her going into re rehab or, you know, I that's thought what, that. That's what ended it. Yeah. But I just was unsure of in this context, if it was frustrating now for like, I kind of thought with Rachel, Raquel, cheating with Tom that it was like, Oh, they were going to try and make a go at it as mm -hmm. a relationship. 
And so when I saw her block him and, and also him saying, miss you friend, I was very confused on like the, what their relationship is. Yeah. I would never come at miss you friend to somebody that I had emotional feelings for, you know, as like, sec, you know, romantic currently feelings, in the past. romantic feelings, but like currently that he has them or just in general in the past or ever had. We just talked about exes. We don't send gifts. So I wouldn't comment on my ex's happy birthday. Miss you friend. And weird. But my whole thing was who, who split it off with whom there? I think she split it off with him. I'm thinking this is what happened. They did the reunion. She's in a weak state. She just got completely torn down because of obviously the cheating. Um, but she, I mean, Ariana went off on her, calling her worthless, useless, all these things. And girls, girl. Yeah. Ariana Maddox. Girls, girl. Big, big girls, girl. <laughs> and okay, so then they have this. And I'm thinking she's like, they might work out after. Maybe we'll give it a try. But probably going to her mental health facility, she got some clarity that Tom Sandoval is. Her therapist is like, here's the problem. Uh, he's the problem. Yeah. He's terrible. He's manipulated you. You need to focus on yourself. And she finally saw the light that Aww. did not have Tom Sandoval in her life anymore. Rachel, if you're watching this, miss you, friend. Miss you, friend. So that's where when that happened and she blocked him, I was kind of confused on. That was hilarious. I think that you're correct in what you're saying. She was the one that cut it off with him. Mm -hmm. And that's that whole thing. Mm -hmm. That exchange solidified yeah. your theory that you just had. That yeah. I was like, Tom, why are you even... You just got dumped not by your 10-year relationship. Then you got dumped by your affair, Every you know, months. your mistress. Mm -hmm. Just let it go. He Get. Care. He's already moved on, too. He's been seen holding hands with a new woman, so. She's really jumping on the. Can I join Vanderpump Rules? Van wagon. Yeah, 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 let me hop on. Sidebar, our friend Hannah Haley said he was out in Venice this weekend. <gasps> oh, Right by Winston House. That's no surprise. <laughs> I, I know. I was just. I, but yeah, that is yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's funny. Um, I wish I ran into him. What would you, you do? do? I'd go talk to him. Let's go Cardinals. Punch him. You would not punch him. I don't this think you. This is for Ariana. <laughs> this is for Rachel. Not Raquel. <laughs> you're like, I can't believe you're such a big Raquel fan now. I'm not a big fan, but I will say that was pretty cool of her. Blocked. Bye. Is it was any, it was the bye for me. She put a little a okay, sticker. Bye. bye. Is there any world in which she's just trying to build up public sentiment for herself again? Yes, but I think that she actually she didn't get oh man, don't get me going. She didn't really get she's not getting the chance to kind of tell her side of the story now as much because she's not coming back. Again, her choice. I do think that being on a reality TV show is very taxing. Like I do think it's mentally draining. Yeah. You have your public life just out for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. You're going through all these like toxic things. She made a big mistake, obviously like betraying her friend, going through an affair, but uh, yeah, she's not going to have that chance. So it's possible. I think she's really smart that she walked away from Vanderpump Rules. I, I don't think, think so she'd too. ever come back to that show, but maybe she'll come back to something else. I agree with you. I hope that, in the meantime, she can get a job at uh, Lisa's The Dog Store. Oh, yeah. That was her that first That was her, job. like, first season. Yeah. That's so silly. Um, but Lisa Vanderpump hates her, so that's not going to happen. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye, said Lisa. <laughs> um, and then in last, we kind of talked about this for a little bit before, VMAs are tonight. Yeah, VMAs are tonight. Um, kind of forgot that those were a thing, to be I, completely honest. <laughs> I know, me too. And then this, this time around, I've seen a massive surge of like MTV trying to push the VMAs. Have you noticed that at Only all? Only in the last week. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm completely in agreement yeah. with you, but I'm like, Oh, right. We still do award shows. We still do award shows. And there's a guy astronaut all over my feed, but these are kind of my favorite ones when it's all singing. I just think the Oscars are so boring. Yeah. Tony's who Tony, watches those? Emmys. <laughs> Come on. Am I right? <laughs> Let's get some music out here. Let's get some song and dance. Huh? I mean, come on. It's way more fun to watch than people on stage. I agree. I agree. Don't throw things at them. Heard. Heard. And don't get on the stage and slap. Of Aubrey. course, who is the number one nominee? Yeah, Taylor oh Swift. Drum Taylor roll, Swift. please. Yeah, eight, eight nominations. nominations. Jinx. Jinx. <laughs> um, the one thing about this is, is, is this fan voted? 
Uh, Have VMAs fan voted? I want to say yes. You're really testing us on the fan <laughs> knowledge here. But yeah, I don't know. All I'm saying is but the would people- would surprise you, Taylor Swift, being like a top fan vote? No, 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 no. no. That's where I'm saying the other people that are nominated as well, are, it's just a lot of big names- that made me think that it was very. Did you want it to be? Sm- did you think it'd be? Small? You know how a lot of the awards things like they'll pick like somebody random. <laughs> I'm loving your award voice. Award voice. <laughs> or and it'll be like some hit, Oscar some indie to. indie artist for best album of the year, yeah, and you're like yeah, who? Yeah. Versus all of these artists of the year: Beyonce, Doja Cat, Carol G, Nicki Minaj, Shaki- like Shakira. Yeah. What did she release this year outside Shakira's of? She's been doing all her little hate songs against PK. That's artist of the year worthy. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, That's- artist of the year, Beyonce, Doja Cat, Carol G, Nicki Minaj, Shakira, and Taylor Swift. I think all of those make sense except for Shakira. Also, but- Nicki Minaj's new album hasn't even come out yet, right? The Pink. No, she just dropped new music. Yeah, she dropped like a new music this week and she's artist of the year. That's why I was kind of confused too about like Olivia Rodrigo stuff. Where's SZA on artist of the year? SZA makes sense. Oh, she's not on there? She's for video of the year though. Yeah, it's yeah. the VMA. So technically video of the year is the bigger one. Right, 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 right. Which right, is Doja right. Cat for attention, Miley Cyrus. Where's Miley in artist of the year? Th- th- I know it's confusing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but what do you want them to do? I'm like acting like you're the <laughs> one that's in charge. Like, <laughs> I don't know either. How boring it would be if the same people were nominated for every single award. And then it'd be like, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, weird. Yeah. I think, I hope Miley wins a lot. I would love for Miley to win. She never really wins that much though. But yeah, uh, she did it. She's nominated for Flowers, Nicki Minaj for Super Freaky Girl, Olivia Rodrigo, Vampire, Sam Smith, and Kim for Unholy, Sizzla Kill Bill, and Taylor Swift for Antihero. She's going to win. She's going to win. Who? So, Taylor Swift. Yeah. I say Antihero? That, I say this every damn year. Where's the cutoff on these songs? I How know. long ago was Unholy Okay, out? okay. Here are things that we need <laughs> to conclude with Dennis. <laughs> Jets exist. Jets exist. <laughs> Nobody takes care of their kids. Number three, um, no one knows how long the year cycle is on songs or movies that are nominated. And most breakups end in cheating, cheating. or hectic schedules. Those are the only answers that and you need to that take away from this podcast. <laughs> yeah. um, That's good. I'm interested though. I'm yeah. interested. Also like, yeah, I want, I, I'm going to, I'm going to tune in, not tune it, maybe not tune in, but I'll, well, it's currently I want to follow who wins. Yeah. We can talk about that. Never. Just based, yeah. <laughs> just based on, like Sam Smith, yeah. For five I really nominations, love I, really I love like that, that song. song, that one song. Oh, I like a lot of Sam Smith's music. Yeah, from when? From over the years. If you're gonna win me one more time, I love Sam <laughs> Smith's 2015. <laughs> He's up for Song of the Year for his 2018. Too good at goodbyes. Okay, you don't keep up with every single single, do you? Do you? I do. I think that wraps it up, though. Yeah, I think so. This girl's going to bully me now. <laughs> Probably, per usual. Uh, updates at Playing Telephone on yep. Instagram and TikTok, and also full episodes on YouTube. Yep. All right. <laughs> yep. Yep. Bye. And that's the end of the award show. See you next time. Bye.